All right, I'm gonna show you a few things here. Now, a lot of people are aware that um, electronics fail because of bad capacitors, but there is a segment of people who, knowing, you know, what that means to them, bad capacitors means it doesn't work, means they need to go to Best Buy and buy a new one. Um, those people don't know exactly what bad capacitors are, what they look like, how they fail, and why. Now, this is an example of a machine that has um, suffered from failing capacitors as a result of the original um, controversial issue that happened at Nichicon, or Michigan, um, where a formula was used um, to produce the electrolyte in the capacitors that was missing an ingredient because it was stolen from another company. Therefore, the, uh, the formula was incorrect and it would react over time and eventually cause utter failure. This is what it looks like when they fail. These capacitors are located near the heat or near the, the processor and are part of the power supply that uh, the motherboard's power control circuitry. And uh, this one is completely blown. What happens is the capacitor literally explodes releasing electrolyte and other substances uh, through the vented cap. Now what happens is, the, see how the cap or the top of the capacitor is is perforated in a triangular type shape? They do that so that the capacitor will blow in a controlled manner. So the case will split as you can see oops, as you can see here. The case will actually give way and uh, release pressure that way. Now this machine was used um, in this condition for approximately, as far as we can tell, a little over one year, exactly as you see it. And what ended up happening was the electrolyte, because the machine was tilted, was standing this way, it was a tower case, the electrolyte blew from the capacitors and dripped onto a um, a gigabit ethernet card that was in this top slot. And if you can see that burn mark right there, it actually corroded the contacts on the ethernet card. That's bad because this machine was used um, as, if I recall, yeah, as our, as our student filter. This is our internet traffic filter. It was running Dan's Guardian. And the machine somehow managed to stay running despite all of this. In fact, it may even fire up right now if I try it. If I put memory back in it and get it going. But that's a good visual example of what it means when a capacitor fails or blows. Sometimes they can blow with sparks and flames and all sorts of cool stuff. But these are low voltage, power, uh, low voltage capacitors with not really much amperage behind them. Here's another one, same exact machine, same model, same same age and everything. Uh, this one's slightly worse. I think every single capacitor on this board has failed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh boy, I think there's a few more too. Oh, that's it. Yeah, seven of them have blown their tops. Um, most equipment affected by this was manufactured, I believe, between 2000 and 2006. Um, and it would affect televisions, computers, basically anything electronic that contains a capacitor from Nichicon. <laughs> and uh, is a, it, it actually has plagued a lot of equipment and caused a lot of failures and caused a lot of problems. Um, I know Dell is famous for it, as is Apple and HP, uh, or Compaq in this case. Now, in many cases, if no f further damage was caused by this issue, uh, that is corrosion on the board or um, any blown components along the way, simply replacing the capacitors will often repair the equipment and uh, you'll never have that problem again because these capacitors have been completely removed from the supplies chain 
by now almost completely removed. So there's a good likelihood that you'll never have this problem again. But um, I wouldn't I wouldn't spend a ton of money repairing a board like this um, because there could be other damage uh, that we don't know about yet. Well, that's it for now. I figured I'd uh, do a quick segment on capacitor failures and how it affects you. I hope you've enjoyed.